How to measure your torso for a coat of plates. What's most important before we get started is please be wearing whatever you would be wearing underneath your coat of plates. If you have your gamison, put that on. Any kind of undergarment you would be wearing underneath the gamison. Try to recreate as close as you can what you would normally be wearing underneath this coat of plates. If you don't have your gamison yet, you're not going to like this, wait until you do. Um, <clears throat> you'd be amazed how much a little bit extra bulk and padding in some places really changes your measurements. Coat of plates are a little bit adjustable, but not that much. Um, don't waste 500 or 300 or however much dollars you're going to spend on a piece of armor that won't fit you. Uh, it costs us both money, nobody's happy, it's all kinds of trouble. So please make sure you're wearing whatever you would be wearing before you take these measurements. One additional note, if you're anticipating putting on, or more preferably taking off, a significant amount of weight, it's probably best until that process is either well along or completed hopefully, <laughs> uh, before taking these measurements and sending, uh, getting your armor made. Um, <clears throat> if, for example, right now uh, you have a 44 or 42 inch chest and you say, well, Eric, I'm going to be losing 20, 25 pounds. You know, I had somebody say they're going to be planning on losing 60 pounds um, and they wanted me to guess. Please don't do that. Um, that's taking a big risk. Again, why throw $500 away? Um, wait until you have the body shape that you're aiming for or that you anticipate you'll have for a little while, again, if possible and then take the measurements and get the armor made for that shape. Um, the more variables we add in, the less likely your armor will fit, the less likely you're going to be happy, the more trouble we're going to have. So, the measurements. All you need for these is a flexible measuring tape. It's best to have someone help you with this, but as I'll show you in the video, you can do this by yourself. The first thing you want to take is a chest circumference. So make sure the tape lays flat, bring it up just below your armpits, not all the way in your armpits, right about at nipple level, and you want to take a chest circumference. Um, <clears throat> when you do this, if you're a big bodybuilder kind of guy, uh, don't take a giant breath, don't flex your pecs out as much as you can, take this measurement in your natural rest state, otherwise the armor will likely end up being too big. Um, again, the armor as we take this into account, don't worry. <laughs> okay. This is a steel skin. Um, if we make it as big as it can possibly be, you know, if you are a gigantic guy and you do this big flex and you gain three inches, if I build the armor to that size, it's going to be too loose on you 90% of the time, maybe even 95% of the time, and that's a problem. So take this in your rest state. Okay. Then you want to shimmy down a little bit, and you want to take a measurement at your natural waist. Okay, and these should be fairly snug. Don't, don't, don't have it on loose where you can fit fingers in them. This should be fairly snug. Don't jam yourself though. Okay. Now find your belly button and take it just at that point or just above that point. Don't take this measurement where you wear your belt. That's a little different. Especially if you're a guy a little bit big in the belly, you want to take this up here where your belly button is. Don't take it where you wear your belt. The measurement will be different. Third measurement's a little easier. You want to find your two collarbones and there's a little squishy spot right in between them. Then feel a little bone just below that. You want to stick the top of the measuring tape right at that bone. Come down in front of your chest and belly. Find your belly button. It's right about there and that is your nape. Okay, and there'll be a point on the form you can enter that. The last one, uh, the fourth one is a little tricky. For this one, we're going to take a side measurement. Now, I often say put the tape into your armpit, and some people jam it all the way in there as much as they can. So, let's settle this right up. Take your fingers and place them as high up as they'll go. Put your arm down, and you think, well, if that was a metal plate, part of my torso armor, that would suck. That'd be really uncomfortable. It's going to bind, it's going to jam in there. It's not very comfortable. So, scooch it down a little bit. Uh, that's a little better. A little bit more? Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's a nice balance. If you go down here, you can say, oh, that's really comfortable, but look at that giant gap here when you get stabbed. So, find that comfortable point, take the top of your measuring tape, put it right there. Then you want to go down and find your iliac crest. It's uh, often called the hip bone, but it's that bony protrusion that comes up from your crotch all the way up to your side here. And you want to find the top of that bone, and you want to measure right where we figured this out, right to the top of that bone, that is your side measurement. Send that in as well. This last measurement isn't strictly required. Uh, most of my patterns have a pretty average ratio built in, but depending on the group you're fighting with, depending on your personal preferences, your fighting style, you may want to include this. And if you're all gussied up anyway, it's probably worth the extra effort. Um, this is a chest width measurement. Now, <clears throat> as a standard rule for European armor, if you can do this, that's pretty good. That allows you to uh, drink, allows you to touch your face, scratch your, you know, every time you put a helmet on, you scratch your nose. It allows you to take care of those things. Um, you should not be able to hug yourself. Okay, actually, my gamison doesn't even permit that. Um, Japanese armor, for example, you can touch your elbows together in some cases. Um, that's great mobility, 
but you pay for it with having some vulnerability here. And the first time you take a spear thrust or a half sword hit there, you're going to wish you gave up a little bit of that. Um, but again, personal preference. Um, <clears throat> if you have too wide of an upper chest, then every time you go to cross your arms for any reason, even take some basic guards, you might take a bruise here, and we don't want to deal with that. So, just like for our gorget, uh, the best thing to do is take a piece of cardboard. I'm going to use a middle of the folder because that's what I have handy. Um, something, something thick, something a little heavy because you want to be able to feel it through your gamut on. Uh, if you're a big guy, you have to go like this. I'm skinny, so I can do this way. Um, this is where it's really helpful to have somebody else press it against you. I'm going to use my chin and put your arms out and think and see. Oh, okay. Is that enough mobility for me? Feel the point where it starts to jab into you and think, mm, is that enough for me? If it's uh, too much, cut it down. Uh, if you really have a lot of mobility, but you look down, and I'll use this side here, there's a giant gap. It's like, oh, this feels great. But see all that? That's no good either. So you want to find that nice, comfortable balance point, And really doing that by feel is best. I haven't had much luck with people sticking tape measures across here. Uh, if I get you in person, then we don't need to worry about it. But uh, remotely, this is really the better method. So find the balance that works for you. Uh, I actually prefer about an eight and a half inch myself, so this is almost perfect. Um, <clears throat> once you find that balance, take your ruler, measure how wide the thing is, send that number to me as well. We'll get it fit to you just right. A final note for my female customers. Uh, if you are a female, or if this armor is being ordered for a female body, it is very important to let me know that up front, somewhere in that email, somewhere in that order ticket, that this is for a female. Um, the design is different. Unlike other parts of the body, the arms, the legs, the helmet, tweak the proportions a bit, works just fine. The torso is different. The hips and the breasts do change things, and it's important for me to know that if you want armor that will fit you. Um, if you're a woman who is particularly well endowed, I really recommend looking into breast binding or breast taping. Not the sketchy, creepy kind that does all sorts of damage. Uh, it's actually a medieval, it's a very period solution. Um, it involves using a piece of fabric about a day wide, very long, wrapping around yourself in, in uh, different manners to achieve different results. What you want to do is try to squish that silhouette down as much as possible while also remaining comfortable. From what I understand, it's a very comfortable solution. Um, if you're smaller or more average size, a sports bra, yeah, you can get away with it, but this is really, from what I understand, um, a much better solution. And lastly, once you've done your research, once you've tried it out, if you're going to go the breast binding or taping method, Please put it on, then put on your gambas on, put everything else on, and then take your measurements. Because again, inches matter, uh, and it will change your shape, and it will change how the armor turns out. Um, lastly, when you do your chest width measurement, if you are female, I would recommend uh, airing on the side of a little wider. You know, just I'm not saying make it so that it's incredibly uncomfortable or painful here, but it tends to be a better bet to bring that edge of the metal over um, to protect the breast. And that probably goes without saying, but just air a little bit on the wider side for that if you can. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to email me. I do make armor and coats of place, especially for women, pretty frequently, and it can help sort you out. Thank you.